Good morning. Today is November 10th, 2016, and the birthday of the United States Marine Corps. Tomorrow is Veterans Day. We are doing our Veterans Day message today because we are off school tomorrow. However, I feel it's important, being a veteran myself, that you hear this message regardless if we're in school or not. This message is a combination of my thoughts and the thoughts of others that I liked and read over the years. Please sit back and enjoy this message. Nearly a century ago, across an ocean and on the fields of Europe, the world found itself entrenched in a war so horrific it was called the war to end all wars. The conflict was so brutal that people in every country around the globe gained a new understanding for the courage, the valor, and the sacrifice of its soldiers. And when the guns of World War I finally went silent on the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour, this nation chose to take pause and remember the sacrifice that our veterans have given to this nation. This day is now called Veterans Day. Tragically, World War I was not the war to end all wars. Since its conclusion, men and women from every community in America have been called upon to serve their nation. They have come from all walks of life. They are fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. These men and women who serve in our armed forces come from backgrounds as diverse as the nation they serve. But as diverse as they may be, they are united by a common courage and common dedication that has driven them to answer the call to protect their nation and the liberty of fellow citizens. They are united by the love for their country, their belief in freedom, and their faith in America's future. Veterans are often asked, why are you so willing to fight, and if need be, to die? The answer to that question is as complex and yet as simple as the soul of America itself. Veterans fight because they believe. Not that war is good, because it is sometimes it is necessary. Our soldiers fight and die, not for the glory of war, but for the prize of freedom. One lesson that I always remember was taught to me in 1978 by my drill instructors at Paris Island, South Carolina. It was two simple sentences that could be applied to all of our veterans, and it stays with me to this day. If you want to win a fight, you have to be prepared to get hit. If you want to save lives, you have to be willing to die. As put very simply by that combat Marine, freedom isn't free, but don't worry about it. The United States Marine Corps and others have paid your share. That statement can be applied to all prior and current members of our armed forces. Please keep in mind, America is not at war. America is at the mall. The men and women of the armed services are at war. When I think about freedom, I think about how high school students view Veterans Day. Surely you know that it's a national holiday, and many people receive the day off with pay. It is ironic that the majority of veterans go to work on this day. I also wonder about the high school students of this great country who are now trying to make a decision regarding what they will do when they graduate. Will you go to college? Will you find a job? Will you join the military? Please hold those choices dear, because the majority of veterans who are honored today did not have them. The veterans of World War I, Korea, and the not so fortunate sons of the Vietnam era had one choice, going to war. And to war they went. The diversity of their skin color, social status, and religion was set aside, and they fought as one. They knew that when the going got tough, they would have to do what was necessary to fight for each other, fight for their country, and fight to save each other's lives, even if it meant losing their own. They may not have liked each other, but they loved each other out of necessity. There is no greater brotherhood than that born of war. And please remember that when they went out to fight, they were not the gray-haired men and women in weather uniforms that we see today. They were the same age as our juniors and seniors. The majority of them 17 and 18 years of age. Some of them lied to enlist at ages of 15 or 16. They went to war because they wanted to fight for their country. Young men and women who wanted to make a difference and preserve the lives and lifestyles of Americans. Men and women such as Private First Class Thomas Atkins. PFC Atkins fought gallantly in the Philippine Islands during World War II. With two friends, he occupied a ridge outside the perimeter defense established by 1st Platoon on a high hill. At 3 a.m., two companies of Japanese attacked with rifle, machine gun, grenades, dynamite, and landmines. PFC Atkins was severely wounded. 
His two companions were killed. Despite the intense hostile fire and pain from his deep wounds, he held his ground and returned heavy fire. After the attack was repulsed, he remained in this precarious position to repel any subsequent attacks. He did not return to the American lines for medical treatment. An enemy machine gun set up within 20 yards of his foxhole, he, they vainly attempted to drive him off and silence his guns. The Japanese repeatedly made fierce attacks, but for four hours, Private Atkins determinedly remained in his foxhole, bearing the brunt of each assault. He maintained steady and accurate fire until the charge was repulsed. At 7 a.m., 13 enemy dead lay in front of his position. He had fired 400 rounds and used three rifles until each had jammed so badly they could no longer operate. He withdrew during a lull to secure a rifle and more ammunition. He was persuaded to remain at the medical treatment center. While waiting, he saw a Japanese force attacking the perimeter. He seized a nearby rifle and killed all in the squad. A few minutes later, lying on a leader bleeding, he discovered an enemy group moving up behind the platoon's lines. Despite his severe wound, he sat up, delivered heavy rifle fire against the group, and forced them to withdraw. Private Atkins' superb bravery and fearless determination to hold his post against the main force of repeated enemy attacks, even though painfully wounded, were major factors in enabling his comrades to maintain their lines against a numerically superior enemy force. So you think you're having a bad day because the line of Duncan was too long? PFC Atkins saw two of his friends killed, was severely wounded, and never gave up the fight. That's having a bad day, ladies and gentlemen. The stories of our veterans and their courage is long and storied. Private Atkins is just one example of the sacrifice men and women of the armed services make on a daily basis. Please note they were not playing little games such as Call of Duty that romanticized war and contributed to the obesity and laziness of our youth, but were involved in the horrible truth of war. I pray to God that none of you will ever have to rest your head on a pillow at night and try to sleep with the memories that the veterans carry with them. The veterans that landed at Omaha Beach, fought at Inchon, the Asha Valley, and during our present conflicts. But please realize that because of these veterans, you're able to sit here today and safely listen to this message. On this Veterans Day, we pray tribute to our veterans, to the fallen, and to their families. To honor their contributions to our nation, let us strive with renewed determination to keep the promises that we have made to all who have answered our country's call. As we fulfill our obligations to them, we keep faith with the patriots who have risked their lives to preserve our union and with the ideals of service and sacrifice upon which our republic was founded. Thank you. Enjoy your day.